No. Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This, That, or The Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. I'm Kelly Thompson, and you're listening to Capes and Lunatic. Hello, kids, and welcome back to another episode of Marvel Tales. Your source for everything, every good Marvel story. I am Phil. Joining me, as always, it is Silver Owl himself. Justin the Owl swooping back into Simcaria. The mercenary manhunter. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Silver Sable has me on her payroll during special missions. That's right, kids. We're back to talk more Silver Sable. This time, issues four and five smack in the middle of Infinity War. Mm. And this is an Infinity Infinity War crossover that I actually like. <laughs> I bet you a lot of people probably miss a lot of people probably miss these back in the day. But I mean, mm. these are these mm-hmm. two are like some of the most entertaining things that come out of Infinity War. Totally, just, just the whole the Doom stuff and yeah, yeah. These two issues are gold. Like as far as Infinity War is concerned, and and just '90s comics in general. I thought it was great how in the middle of infinity war we have a dr doom appearance in silver sable um and they found a way to tie them together that was really cool because i mean they're kind of like neighboring countries so they have diplomatic relations and these two people are both the leaders of their respective countries so it makes sense that they would have had some type of communications in the past but what a nice little surprise that they're actually diplomatic but actually friendly towards each other as well. Like they have a respect towards each other. I really liked that. I thought that was a nice surprise at the beginning of this. Oh yeah. And and it's kind of interesting. I mean, this could easily could have gone off the rails because silver sables kind of off to the side, not like really involved in infinity wars. This could have gone way wrong, mm. but instead it, I, I think like I said, it's some of my favorite stuff to come out of infinity war. And, uh, you know, it's not it's not like Sable has to fight her evil double just like everyone else did. It's like, no, right. no, she's fighting someone else's evil double dooms. Yeah, which would have been the the kind of the predictable thing to do is that S- uh, Silver Sable would be encountering her own evil doppelganger. But I wonder if the reason why she because I don't think we ever saw a Silver Sable like an evil Silver Sable. No, I think I so. Wonder no. why- it, it, it was like, because it only was people with powers that they were trying to duplicate. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I know they did like an evil Iron Man stuff. Uh, I don't know. Maybe just the Magus was just like, you know, that's not a superhero. So, you know, and again, mm. Sable really wasn't going to get involved in Infinity War. So, you know, maybe it's like, what's the point? Or maybe it was people with powers because, well, I mean, we'll see Sandman gets an evil double in this. So. Right. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I can't remember. It's been a while since I've read the other Infinity War things, and I don't remember what the limitation was, if any, behind who got doppelgangers sent after them and who didn't. Yeah, I can't remember. Like, uh, like I know Spider Man and Hawkeye get taken on, taken out early. I'm trying to remember. Oh, mm-hmm. Hawkeye might Hawkeye might have gotten an evil double. So mm. maybe that's just because he was an Avenger. I don't know. Right. Yeah. I can't remember. It's- it's pretty random. But either way, I like the fact that it, it wasn't an evil silver sable, like yeah. a silver sable versus evil sable thing. Because uh, even though that probably would have been entertaining, I don't think it would have been nearly as, as good as how these two issues turned out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I think, yeah, ba- it was basically just, oh, silver sable gets, you know, smacked by some Infinity War fallout. Hmm. <laughs> Right. During the middle of a diplomatic relations mission to Latveria, no less. <laughs> Talk about timing. <laughs> it's so funny. I mean, the issues are so good, but you get, but you know, it's probably, you know, it was probably like, oh, okay, you're okay. We gave you this Silver Sable book. You have to be part of Infinity War. It's like, oh. That's right. Yeah. On the fourth and fifth issue, like within the first six months of the series, uh, you're I involved think- in this big giant crossover. 
It was like it's like the oh was it no was, was it nomad he gets like I believe he gets attacked by like an evil version of like Gambit who like the evil version was like wait you're not Gambit or something like that. <laughs> where's your where's your cards I don't see your playing cards are you the right the guy yeah that's the funny code like, oh. oh that's so funny <laughs> uh. Sorry, so I guess we'll muddle through. I mean, I have synopses for these, but I guess we can. Oh, uh... good. We yeah, we don't have them on the app, but luckily I have the the physical copies at hand. So yes, I guess we'll muddle through without Ray being here or sending in feedback. Yeah, Ray. Yeah, now, Ray. How dare you not send feedback? Who do you think I am, Russell? Come on. I gotta rub that one in. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta rub that one in. <laughs> That's okay. We both know that Ray's busy. He's a busy guy. He's got. Got a new little one to to wrangle. Let's yeah, and it's, yeah. Yeah, and it's called Marvel Snap. <laughs> that too. I love. It. He's like, it's not even the name of the game. Like, Shut That's up, Marvel. The name of it. Marvel Snap sounds better. <laughs> Works for the joke, son. Ray's, Ray's all uh, obsessed with Marvel Snap. Uh, <laughs> what the f? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what you get for not sending V back, Ray. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's too he's too concerned about other things. All right. We'll leave him alone. The hard master. We'll have we'll have him on the next time we talk about Silver Sable, though. We'll on um when we talk about issues six. Six onward, we'll have. Oh, are we, ta- are we talking things. about doing some like Hellcat, Tigra, Dazzler oh, stuff? Yeah. So I mean, I I can see us snagging him for that. Yeah, definitely for the Tigra and Hellcat stuff, oh, yeah. and Dazzler too. Yeah, I didn't know that Ray was a Dazzler fan too. Okay, ah, uh, well, she's a hot chick, so I'm assuming uh, Ray's mm-hmm. a fan. <laughs> his uh, his uh, reading interest. Uh, yeah, especially that '80s outfit. Oh yeah, the skin tight blue bodysuit, or even the white disco one. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, that had some cleavage going on there. <laughs> mirror uh, ball cleavage. Oh, nice! <laughs> Man, look at the mirror balls on that chick. <laughs> 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 Working at the car wash. Thank you, thank you, Justin. I feel like Lilith is, is still here. <laughs> uh, Des was like, "I've got some headlights for you, boys." Whoa! I wonder if my wrist is ready for that. <laughs> I know raises. All right, <laughs> all right. Let's get to some silver stable, silver yes. stable in the wild pack number four for um. September 1992, and I wish comics were still a dollar twenty-five. Uh, oh, wouldn't that be great? Yeah, I know. My dinner with Doom? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> so good. All right, writer, friend of a friend, Gregory Wright, uh, penciler Stephen Butler, inker James Sanders, the third, color colorist Joe Rosis, letterer Jade Moed, and editor Craig Anderson. Dr. Doom meets with Kang. This is the real Doom, kids. They plan to trace a powerful energy source and walk towards a spaceship. Doom's doubleganger watches them fly away, then defends him- itself from a Doom bot. <laughs> <laughs> this thing were any wilder, Kristoff would come in and be fighting the evil, evil doubleganger. Yeah, if Kristoff was around, things would get really messy. Silver Sable. Oh my god, can you imagine like Kristoff hit on Silver Sable? <laughs> <laughs> but you're a child now. I'm doomed. Don't give it to me. She's like, go away, child. I am doomed, and you will polish the royal scepter. <laughs> you will, you will, you will. <laughs> I wonder if my wrist is ready for that. You can come back in another 10 years, Christoph. Uh, Silver Sable arrives in a carriage for her annual dinner with Doom. 
She is greeted by the double ganger and they go inside the castle. I love the thing. It's like, oh, you changed your armor again. I don't know about those skulls and stuff. <laughs> She's like, it looks very undignified, Victor. <laughs> I was waiting for you. You look like one of those heavy metal bands or something. Yeah, you're posing for an album cover or something. <laughs> Do a little moonlighting on the side. And what do you say is like, uh... Mm-hmm. Well, one would never be able to accuse you of patronization, my dear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. uh, uh, servo guards kill her driver outside. <laughs> <laughs> Near the end of the meal, the double ganger does not like the taste of its drink, so it kills a servant. <laughs> Silver spits out against this. Then, what again? She's not even like, oh, hey, this is an imposter. It's like, hmm, you know, now it's like Victor kind of out of control. But yeah, what are you doing, Victor? Yeah, it still wasn't the, out of the realm of possibility that this is the real two. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Silver speaks out against this. Then the double ganger hits her. She realizes it is not the real Doctor Doom. In a dimensional corridor, Kang and Doom follow Galactus's ship. Again, this is Infinity War stuff. So, mm-hmm. it's, uh... yeah. I'm like, did we really need this except for the fact of, uh, oh, hey, this is where Doom's at? Well, I, yeah, because I didn't have any idea what was going on. I, I mean, it ties into it. the greater Infinity War stuff, but I mean, for, mm-hmm. this, for the purpose of the Silver Sable story, couldn't you have shown him like flying off with Kang and be like, okay, well, if you want to see where they went, check yeah. out Infinity War check or whatever. Out- yeah. <laughs> right. I'm kind of glad, though, that they did put that in there because it actually got me more interested to read what was going on in the, especially in the issue after this, their big discovery that they make. Um, that actually piqued my interest more. I was like, oh, cool. That's, that's cool. I wonder what's going on there. It's funny. It's like, this is what the real Doom's out, up to. Meanwhile, the imposter's having the worst house party in history. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's not wrong. At Castle Sable, Morty and the Wild Pack watch news reports about the attack on Four Freedoms Plaza and American heroes fighting their double gangers. They try to contact Silver's driver, but gets static. Morty demands they go get her. I mean, what was with Mo- and like Morty like slapping Sandman? I'm like, oh, yeah, what? punching I, him right in the face. Yeah. You get right if you get if he got like got in his face and was like, no, you go get my niece or whatever. I'd be like, okay, I get that, but you're like smacking the Sandman around. Yeah, I didn't. That kind of surprised me too. I mm. thought that was a little strange for Uncle Morty to. Go crazy like that. But he was the level headed one. Mm, yeah. In the last you know, three issues, he was kind of the the voice of reason for a lot of the situations. Wanted to be like, yeah, why don't you try that with Crippler, you know? <laughs> uh, he, although he might have liked it. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at Castle Doom, Silver fights multiple Doom Knights and Doom Bots. <laughs> <laughs> The Wild Pack board a plane and wait for Sandman to join them. However, he is attacked uh, by his double ganger, which then merges with him. Cliffhanger ending. Some of you kids thought your STDs were bad. (laughs) (laughs) This one burns all over. (laughs) Oh! Burns to your core, kids. <laughs> yeah. I, don't know if they, I don't know if they make a pill for that. No. Oh. All right, here's the cliffhanger. In a communications room, Doom's double ganger finds Silver disguised as a Doom bot. <gasps> Love it. I know. Yeah. So, thoughts? I love this one so much. Yeah, like, like I said in the last episode when i was originally reading these when they first came out the first uh three issues i really enjoyed a lot but it wasn't until these two that i was really hooked and this series grabbed me i was like okay i really really like this series a lot um i loved the art in this too this is the first time in this series that i had seen the art from both um Stephen Butler and the inker James Sanders. 
Yeah. Um, and they were a great combination together. There's some uh, panels where their art kind of is like a Ron Lim influence, which of course I love. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's other times when there's kind of like a like a subtle uh, Dale Keown influence, like when the evil in the next issue when the evil Sandman attacks the guys in the ship. Like there's there's some little subtle hints of Dale Keown and some other artists of the time in their artwork, but it's always in a flattering way. It, it never feels like a blatant like artistic style ripoff. No, oh, no. Um, and they have their own style together, which is also really great. And it fits this book perfectly. I think that their art style is really excellent for this type of book. Um, it, and even they draw a fantastic Doom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kang looks good. Take in mm. the couple of pages we see him. Uh, mm-hmm. Even that, even that fake Doom's armor, you know, looks <laughs> with the skulls and the spikes and things. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I thought these people could shift their appearance. Yeah, these double gaggers could shift their appearance. Why did these look like regular Doom? You know. Yeah. <laughs> and again, yeah. the Magus's plan really goes off the rails because it's like you know half these double gangers like will try to go rogue. Like I think this Doom is just like you know I'm going to cause havoc and roll that fairy. You know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like was yeah, it? Yeah. He says. He says, I will begin my war with Simcaria and follow with Transia. The oh. true Doctor Doom will return to a ruined land where he will be slain and I shall rule. Exactly. So that's double ganger. Well, again, it's a Doom's double ganger because, of course, he's going to go rogue. I love how it's like, ah, it's anti- <laughs> Doom's, e- Doom's double ganger is basically like, yeah, he's basically just a little crazier, but it's Doom. <laughs> yeah. He, he kills like twice as many people as Doom does indiscriminately. Because it's like this this one, this guy goes off the rails. Uh, Moon Knight's double ganger doesn't even oh. like, try to like multi, do multiversal crap. Yes. And stuff. Yeah. He goes on a major uh, cosmic piss tear. So that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like, like half the guy, half the guys the Magus creates are have like their own agenda, it seems like. Look, look what the Spider Man doppelganger did. That oh. one went off and did its own thing for years. <laughs> oh my god, Daredevil's double ganger. Oh it. yeah. <laughs> I just forget about that one. He, he, last, he lasted quite a while. Oh yeah. I don't, you know, he oh god, he got into a battle with it. he <laughs> during the actual Infinity War. I don't know if he even like encountered Daredevil. He was like fighting Calypso. It's Calypso oh, and the, the zombie. <laughs> and, yeah. And then uh, Fall from Grace and uh, Chichester wrote, you know, there's this thing that can alter your body. And, you know, he's like, oh, I'm going to make myself exactly. I'm going to make myself Matt Murdock, you know. I'll kill the old guy, take his place. And then it's like, no, he gets killed as, as a perfect duplicate of Matt Murdock. He's like, oh, <laughs> Matt Murdock's like, I can take my death now. I love it. Oh, uh, But, all right, I know this is a 90s comic, so... I mean, there. That's the logic behind this, but it, you know, in the middle of the fight, when Sable's like, "Oh yeah, I'm glad I cut like the bottom of my dress yeah. off, so it's better I'm to shred my dress up." Yeah. But it's like I'm not going to take the shreds and like tie up my chest so like my boobs don't fall out or you yeah. Know, I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm not going to rip the arms off either. You know, it's not. Oh yeah, you know, with the puffy it's, shoulder. Pad it's not going to hinder my up. movement to have those puffy shoulders on there at all. You know, but I need to have my legs free so I can run. I mean, I, I get it. Yeah, you need to be able to run fast, and you can't do that in that big ball gown that she had on before. But yeah, I guess but you like <laughs> slid it up the side or something. I know. Yeah, it could have been a little bit more conservative. Yeah, but, but I mean, I mean, we, but, uh, we, I mean it's we, for we, survival yeah. and for the hint of butt cheek. You know. Oh yeah, there were lots of hints. Yeah, uh, I wanted to see her use that sword some more. Because she's got that sword for yeah. like a couple pages, but she doesn't really get a chance to use it. She kind of drops it in the middle of the fight with the Doombot, and we don't get to see her use that. I was like, oh, damn, I want to see her sl- slash some Doombot's head off with that thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or, at least, yeah. or at least one of those servo droids, like decapitate one of those things with that sword. <laughs> Yeah, she kind of uses uh, one of those power lances or whatever to shoot, and her she's like stabbing doom bots and stuff. I, yeah, she, she kicks the head off one. That's pretty cool. Right? Yeah, she kicks his head right off. Um, she yeah, grabs the, She grabs she... the one doom bot's hand and makes him blast the other one. <laughs> yeah, I love how she used that power lance. It was so cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah, I know. I mean, there's some good there are some good action scenes in this. Definitely. Yeah, both these issues, the action was really good, really well done. And believable for a comic book, like all of this action. Like, I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> technically she shouldn't have been able to kick his the Doombot's head right off with her just her foot, but <laughs> with no powers or super strength or anything like that. But we'll give her that because she's silver sable. Oh, is that the one? I mean, there's there is one she like kind of like stabs it in the neck with that land. So I'm gonna, mm. that this is yeah, that. maybe 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 she like got his head loose or something. Yeah. But I, I love Doom's double ganger has all the skulls and the spikes. Sandman's double ganger has a mohawk. A mohawk, yeah. And the stripes are a little bit different. Yeah. On the, on the shirt. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a little subtle difference in the pattern. But basically, yeah. not, a, not a lot of stuff. Yeah. That was also a surprise the first time I read that, that Sandman lost that fight. And his doppelganger took over and joined them. I thought, ooh, that's interesting. Yeah, and it's kind of like subtle too, because you see, you see them like struggling, and the doppelganger's like grabbing him. He's like, ah, you know, kind of like you know, almost like a mm-hmm. burning touch almost. And yeah, you just see like a someone looking like Sandman walking out because it could almost be like, I guess he got taken over. You know, they weren't mm. like, you know, they weren't like a hundred percent on that. Well, that 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 was what I took away the first. Yeah. Time oh yeah. Yeah. I was like, ooh, it looks like he's losing. And then when he just kind of strolled out like that and didn't say anything to anybody yeah, about, yeah, hey, yeah. guys, I was just attacked by somebody that looked exactly like me, and he burned the hell out of me. Like, he just kind of strolled out with this grin on his face. I thought, ooh, okay. And, and again, that got me more interested about the Infinity War stuff, about the doppelganger things, which up to this point, I was quite apathetic about to be honest with you <laughs> i didn't really care much about all the overarching story of the infinity war and it, it hasn't really aged well i don't think as far as the the three infinity crossovers goes i mean they they all i mean no offense but the three they they subtly went down in quality as they went because infinity gauntlet's probably the best then you get infinity is, war yeah. and then you get the infinity crusade it's just crusade like, oh, which is, oh you're, yeah. you're 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 why don't you just point a gun at me and take ask for my money jeez <laughs> yeah oh the crusade was where they lost me I thought, oh, oh yeah God. yeah this stinks uh but infinity war i was here for some of that because mm-hmm. I thought the idea of evil doppelgangers was kind of cool to a certain extent. I didn't like the idea that it was the Magus. I thought that was tired. I kind of wanted it to be somebody else, some other villain. Yeah, Adam Warlock really never really did it for me, so I'm just like, uh, another Warlock thing. Yeah, but just for me it was, okay, another time when the Magus comes out and screws everything up again. Um, I felt like that had already been done a few times. I tell you though, I tell you the one who that seems like they always had the ball and chain to it is uh, Thanos. It's like, okay, Thanos oh, isn't right. behind this this time, so why is Thanos still here? You know, <laughs> right? Yeah, what's his stake in all this stuff? Exactly. Yeah, um, but I also liked the. It was cool to see like the the designs of some of these evil doppelgangers like the evil spider-man oh, was yeah. cool with all the arms and the teeth the fangs and the the evil captain america that we we talked about during the cap wolf episode with the, oh, the yeah. spike shield like the razor shield and, i mean it was cool to see that for for a little while you know just for an issue like that wasn't bad oh i'm sure i'm sure those artists had fun like coming up with a lot of those designs yeah yeah the evil i remember the evil ben grimm looked really cool the yeah. Evil thing. yeah um yeah so it wasn't all bad infinity war wasn't all bad it's just i felt like that kind of went on a little too long yeah i remember the fantastic four had like three or four issues that were wrapped up in this yeah and i remember thinking gosh isn't this over yet <laughs> This is still going on. <laughs> yeah, because again, it's like it, it's not varied. Because again, with that that Captain America one we covered, it was only a couple pages in that issue. Yeah, Silver Sable, it's two issues. Wonder Man got like what three? Three. And then, yeah, like, like you were saying, like the Fantastic Four got. I think yeah, I think it was like four maybe. Four, or, I think. Or something yeah. Like that. Yeah. 
I know it was three. There are another yeah. number, three in a row. Yeah, I just I thought. Gosh, I don't think it cool. just depends on how many they want because Moon Knight got a whole bunch too, didn't it? That, True. That for a few issues, yeah. It did. I was surprised by that. That was like four issues too. And there was one issue where it was a bunch of different artists. Mm -hmm. Because they were doing a multiversal thing. So I don't know if they just let the people, some of these people control their own destiny, where it's just like, yeah, you can do as many issues as you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just make it tie into the overarching story somehow. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, there. I mean, the the issue before and after kind of tied into it, but like Quasar really only got like, uh, was it like one? Oh. Yeah, he got one, just one, right? Yeah, yeah, because because he like loses the, the fight, the warlock. I'm like, come on, <laughs> yeah. that's why I hate warlocks. Always written so per, especially when if it's like Starlord, it's like he's so perfect, and yeah, like, nobody can beat him. Yeah, <laughs> so constant. <laughs> Give me the original Marvel any day over warlock. I agree. I agree. Over the two of those, I prefer Marvel. Quasar, Marvel, Genus Bell. Yes, all of those. <sighs> all right. Enough old man ranting. Uh... <laughs> Back in my day, this was cosmic. <laughs> That's right. I love that one. Or this fellow. Yeah, oh, more. yeah. Did, did they ever do a, um, a figure with his captain Cree uniform the green and white one oh uh genus uh, oh marvel uh i don't know about marvel but they did do one for genus oh nice yeah yeah i didn't know about that one yeah oh that's yeah i'm gonna have to get that one so i was looking for yeah, like a nice. like a genus in the red and blue suit but i saw that for on sale the one time i was like oh i gotta get that mm. speaking of which that genus fell omnibus Mm. Should be out pretty soon. I might treat myself to that. Treat yourself. Treat myself. Oh yeah, especially. I mean, did you say you you don't prefer the Peter David stuff? Uh, oh, I do. Okay. I just ha I just haven't read a lot of it. I okay, a lot of it. Yeah, because so it's, it's like yeah. So it'll be all, a lot of it will be new to me, which I'm really excited about. He did like two different like. Uh, volumes like the first one was pretty mm. good too and then the second one is like when he starts like wearing this suit he like goes like, yeah he goes like nuts that's the one that i didn't read yeah oh read you gotta read I that haven't read any of that one like yeah, the cosmic was... awareness is like driving him insane yeah I'm yeah i'm really excited about that yeah oh yeah we're gonna have to cover some of that dude or yeah. do i want to do so much I, hell i'll do both i'll do all those genus vel issues i don't care <laughs> we could do a marvel month where we do like half the half the month is the dad and the other half is the son. Well, we are. Well, we we do have something big planned for uh, Marvel towards the end of the year. Huh? Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Episode fifty. Ah, uh, so. yes, yes, yes. All right, all right. Should we uh, finish up this? Uh, this. Yeah, number five. Well, you pe you people thought you had you had some bad dates. Jeez. Yeah, <laughs> this is the dinner date from hell. You know what would have been funny if she would have been running around the castle like like smashing doom bots and like fighting this evil double ganger and thinking, you know, this still wasn't as bad as having dinner with the foreigner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Silver Sable in the Wild Pack, number five from October 1992. Double Jeopardy. Uh, by the same creative team. In a communications room, Dr. Doom's doubleganger finds Silver Sable partially disguised as a Doom bot. She blasts a hole in the floor and escapes. The Wild Pack and Sandman are on a plane heading to Latveria. Sandman has been merged with and taken over by his doubleganger. He attacks the team, causing the plane to fly out of control. Kang and the real Doctor Doom arrive in another dimension. They leave their ship and continue tracking a power source. Silver finds some inactive Doom bots. She further disguises herself in full armor and face mask, then remotely controls the rest to attack Doom's double gang. <laughs> it destroys the drones and resumes searching for Silver, not knowing that she accompanies them. Him. The Wild Pack continues fighting Sandman. Battlestar knocks him out with his shield. 
the double ganger reverts to a mass of tentacles. Uh, Ooh, oh, uh, I don't think those are tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> Their plane is hit by a blast from Doom bots and servo guards, then crashes into the castle. Uh, Silver reveals herself by attacking Doom's double ganger. They fight through the castle while her team fights the robot guards. In the other dimension, Kang and Doctor Doom find five five cosmic cubes. Yeah. Uh, that was the, a nice surprise. I know. The Doom double ganger is defeated by Silver and also reverts to its true tentacled form. I don't think those are tentacles. <laughs> the team returns to their plane and finds the real Sandman underneath the remains of his double ganger. Silver says that whatever Earth heroes are dealing with is, is out of the team's league. And this place take this story takes place during Infinity War number four. Number four. Number four. So I like that. I, I, I like it that, you know, Sable's just like, you know what? I don't want none of that. You know what? I already beat one of these guys, you know, got rid of Sandman's evil double ganger. Mm -hmm. We're out of this. You know, it's not like, oh, we got, we should go race and help the, you know, help this. Yeah. She's Heroes. like, no, this, this is way too big for us. Yeah. No. She's a smart woman. Mm -hmm. I think it's more like, hey, I ain't getting paid to save the universe. <laughs> right. Yeah. There's no money in this for us. Like I said. Um, I love the artwork in this. Again, uh, the fight, the battle scenes were excellent. Oh yeah, like like the the when there's like kind of almost a full sp uh, splash page where the wild pack are tearing into um, all of the servo droids, and uh, Crippler's screaming uh, some song lyrics to break on through to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> and Powell says, I wish he'd at least sing in key. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I love the art in that. And the, the art on the next page with the five cosmic cubes was also great. I mean, that could have been lifted from any of the Silver Surfer comics at the time. It looks oh. so good. Oh yeah, I I've always liked Stephen Butler's like I uh, like uh, I think he he did some work on Web of Spider Man. I I always liked his pencils. Mm, yeah, he's really good, really good. Um, I like how we got a little bit de of development of the the behind the scenes. Well, kind of like the subplot involving Powell being a racist piece of crap towards Battlestar. Oh yeah. He's like, I don't want to need any more of your help. And he pushes him away and all this stuff. Um, I like how we got another little tidbit of that. Because as I was reading that, I thought, okay, they're going to keep developing this. This is going to eventually turn into something big. Um, but Battlestar gets a great moment in this issue, too. <laughs> One of my favorite moments, actually. After the ship crashes, the servo droids and the doom bots are crawling all over the wreckage. And the servo bot says, you are surrounded. Surrender yourselves without incident. Or, And Battlestar says, surrender is for cowards. And he launches himself <laughs> full on straight at all of them and takes them on. I just love it. I love it so much. Yeah, like he's not shielded as a battering ram. He just like yeah. leaps at him. Smashes right into him. It is so good. And that was another reason I got hooked on it because just the way that the action unfolded in this issue, the way the way that the wild pack just kind of sailed into Latveria and took the fight to Castle Doom, I thought that was so good. I just wanted yeah. the scene of like they leave and Doom comes back and like what the f happened? <laughs> right. What are all these tentacles doing all over the floor? Who I destroyed them? Who? <laughs> Who indiscriminately destroyed a bunch of my Doom bots and servo droids while I was gone? Why is this battle battlement all in wreckage? Oh, oh, and of course, you know, Raiden sent feedback, but also like Lilf was talking about maybe lurking in the chat room tonight, but she's probably oh sleeping. Well, yeah, glug glug sleeping. Uh. <laughs> it is Saturday night. <laughs> well. <laughs> Oh, it's so funny. She's a. It's, it's so funny. We uh got done finish. Uh, we recorded with Chichester this morning. The minute Chichester was gone, she's like, "Up, oh, see you in October." <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm like, oh, she's going to sleep to October. She's like, oh, <laughs> I thought about that, actually. I thought, wouldn't it be great to sleep for a whole month? Oh, that's what I, oh, oh. yeah. Oh, you know, put yours. Imagine like one of those sci-fi, like if you put yourself in suspended animation for like a mm. month or something. How great would that be? Oh, man. We wake up feeling like you were 20 again. It'd be fantastic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hell, I'd hell a month. I'd settle for like a oh, a week, a week, a couple. I'd, of I'd days. take a yeah. week. Yeah, I'd take a week. Yeah, that would at least get me feeling to a, about thirty again. I think. Yeah, I could take that. <laughs> yeah, I could handle that. I'd wake up be like, man, I'm hungry. Yeah, that's true. You'd have to have some type of IV drip or something. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that last page, that last panel, like basically, like you know, showing up. Uh... Here's everybody that's taking care of this thing. Well, yeah, because Galactus was looking through everyone's brain at that point. So, mm-hmm. I like go, 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 see what's going on, kid. Yeah, yeah, you got a little bit of everybody there. You've got the Infinity Watch. You've got Alpha Flight, Doctor Strange, Avengers, the Hulk, Silver Surfer, members of. X Factor, X Men. Well, I yeah. think that, I think that was right after that big battle where everyone was fighting uh, the Infinity Watch and Thanos, and then Glass mm. basically just scoops everyone up and starts like going through their minds and stuff. Yeah, stop fighting, you rowdy kids! We got work to do. Mm-hmm. This is kind of the point where, like, I only read like I think this far originally in the Silver Sable book. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna have to come back to this. I've been in. Mm. I enjoyed these when I originally read them. I, I've been enjoying them more this this go around that. Uh, yeah. Years later, yeah. They've held up really well, haven't they? Yeah. The, yeah. Both in terms of the writing and the artwork. The, yeah, all of it has aged very well. I might have to... and the story's really good. Yeah. And again, I mean, he's been his name. I've just covering the '90s stuff. I've seen his name all over the place. I might have to get an interview with Gregory Wright. I would love that. Yeah, if you could, if you could land that, I'd definitely be interested in talking with him sure. about about Silver Sable, about really any any of the stuff that he's done. I'm sure if I look at the yeah. bibliography, I'll be like, yeah, we could talk this, 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 because it's, yeah, <laughs> I could see. And again, he's friends with Chichester. He and from what Chichester is, he seems like he sounds like a very nice man. So yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah, I'd love to chat with him sometime. Oh, when the stars are aligned. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I don't know if I don't know if you follow Chichester on social media. He had a picture from Terrificon. It's like I guess he was it was him. He was standing there taking a picture. It was him, Howard Mackey, Terry Cavanaugh, oh. Walter, and Louise Simonson. I'm like, oh, oh wow, my God, wow, I oh, fly I on I the wall, there. you know? Yeah, I would love to be there. Oh man. And there was Legends. one. There, there was another convention where he did a Daredevil panel. It was him and Nocenti and uh. John Romita Jr. I was like, oh, 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 that'd be so good. Yeah. And they got that to is... be Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, I love it. There needs to be more of those. Mm-hmm. I love that idea. Mm. But <laughs> I'm sure if I might be able to get, I'll reach out to Gregory Ray and be like, yeah, we know Chichester. <laughs> Tell us some embarrassing stories. <laughs> Yeah, I would love to hear. Yeah, I would love to hear some of his stories about Silver Sable because oh, yeah. it's one of those uh, series, you know, that I love that fell between the cracks in the '90s. It doesn't get a lot of love and it doesn't get a lot of respect. I feel that it it deserves a, a reappraisal. I feel like Marvel should put more of it on the app so that people could could at least leave the first year of it. You know, put know. the first twelve issues on there. It's like issue one and then some ran- other random issue. Over. One with Deadpool, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the only reason it's on there is because Probably. it has a damn Deadpool appearance in it. Stupid. But, yeah, it's it's a great series. I really love it. And it has most of it has held up well, if I remember. I, it's been a few years since I've read it all. But if I remember right, a lot of it has held up well. There was one storyline that was kind of weird where... Um, she she posed for some photographs and like they ended up in penthouse or hustler or some magazine like that. Oh, and I don't God. I don't think I don't think she was nude in them, but she was like kind of like scantily clad, or maybe bikini shots or something. And like it became this big like tabloid thing, like silver sables posing and 
compromising her morals and all this. I can't remember. Like, well, yeah, you, the details, you figure but... it's like, oh, hey, a world lead. You know, we got we got these sca uh, scandalous photos of a world leader. Right. Yeah, and I remember that was kind of weird. I thought uh, this doesn't really. I don't really care for this as much, but yeah, maybe was... that was a storyline that was kind of forced on them from somewhere else. Yeah. It was the nineties. Right. Yeah. They wanted to keep the, the, the horny young boys happy. Maybe they got some a, of the horny young girls too. Maybe they, maybe they got a uh, note that said, uh, do more, be more John Byrne. <laughs> right. Yeah. Burn. <laughs> yeah. There was an issue of Fantastic Four where, uh, you know, those pictures of She-Hulk uh, got out there. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, and and uh, in the not too distant future, probably early next year, yeah, on Electric Mullet, we'll be getting to uh, was that an issue of Action Comics where uh, he had Superman and Big Barda making porn or something? Oh, <laughs> I don't remember that. They're like mind controlled or something. Uh, yeah. I don't remember that one. What, what oh, issue we'll was get that there. Or? We'll get there. Oh my! Yeah, it's one of those covers. I think it's like. Uh, yeah, there's two on the cover, and Mr. Miracle's in the background saying, Superman and my wife! I think I, I remember the cover. I remember them making out, but I don't think I ever read the Yeah, issue. I don't know. If, I don't oh. know. If they, I, don't, I can't remember. If they, I don't think they completed the uh, transaction, but, you know. Oh, okay. Like, I, I can't remember. We'll, we'll, but again, we'll get there on a lot of kids. Yes, the Superman podcast. That's right. Uh, oh, there it is. That's the second. Oh yeah, it might be a two-parter. That's all right. Uh, oh no. Oh no, what's going on? Uh, yes, is that enough? Uh, DC for your Marvel podcast? Get... <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. Yes, five, that five, one. Five, yes. five ninety-three. Okay. Superman and yeah. my wife. I I never read that one. I haven't read that. That's gonna be a new one to me. Oh yeah, and that. Oh god. Superman was a horny little uh, <laughs> in, in that era. And it's like he was single. He was lusting after Wonder Woman. There's that. Amazing Grace. Cat Grant was trying to make her move. Yeah. yeah. Amazing Grace in the in the bathtub in the hot tub. Oh yes, Chat. Check yeah. out Electric Mullet episode four, kids. Mm hmm. I, I propose a uh, a scandalous subplot. In that oh in yeah! That episode. <laughs> Turn of the case, yes. Yeah, I still might write that script and send that to DC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not going to go too far off uh, the the uh, Superman model. Yes, yes, that's the uh, new our new uh, uh, law called the. Uh, that's our uh, Bendis rule. Yeah, <laughs> Bendis, Bendis. <laughs> Uh, all right um anything else Any, Justin, on the end oh, i think i think yeah this this was really good i really enjoyed um the way that silver manipulated the doom bots like oh, yeah. she got the the armor working she got everything it, and it made sense i didn't question that either when she hot wired the doom bots and got them to attack the doom doppelganger like i didn't question that i thought of course she could hotwire robots she would need to be able to to know how to do something like that in the middle of a of a battle in a conflict where she was fighting somebody like aim or hydra or somebody that had robots mm -hmm. she she would have to know how to how to hotwire them and reprogram them and use them against her adversary it was just it was smart so i didn't question that at all i thought it was a great plot device and it was it was really good because that bought her some time, uh, so that she could infiltrate into the ranks of the doppelganger and get close enough to him to make her move. And again, yeah, I mean they did like they did their cheesecake, but also, yeah, I mean they did show you know Silver Sable is pretty smart. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know if we ever get specific with her skill set besides the fighting, but. Yeah, she's had a lot of different training. Yeah, I think they, in in this series, eventually they they discuss. I think some of the things that she's she's gone through and and trained in under and 
all that type of stuff. Yeah. 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 Eventually we have to come back and do more of this. Cause like I said, mm. this, I think this is where I kind of dropped out. So I saw next okay. it's like, Oh, there's a death lock appearance. I'm like, Oh, yes. Death lock paladin appears as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, there's a few more things that happen. There's a there's a great uh, issue where she fights the beetle and some other costumed villains as well. Her and the wild pack have like a team versus team battle with some bad guys. That's oh, good. Nice. There's some gang war stuff that happens that she gets wrapped up in. There's some more stuff with the foreigner, of course. Um, yeah, some really good stuff. Definitely, I would love to to come back to this next year and cover some more of this. Maybe we can do another two or three, four issues. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. All right. So yes, I was going to say request that kids. Maybe. Ray yeah. Maybe Ray <laughs> will crest it if he's not busy with Marvel snap. Uh... <laughs> yeah. We'll have him back on to talk about the next one with, with death lock and all that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You want to talk more uh, silver sable Ray? Sounds like a plan, Jan. <laughs> Uh, how does it make you feel, Ray? Rumpy pumpy. <laughs> Especially those legs. I, lo I love the panel where she's running and she's got the Doom armor on. Oh, but yeah. She, but just her legs are bare. <laughs> I think it's the third page. Hard master. <laughs> like, I've got to keep those legs exposed. <laughs> Tricky dicky. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I love these because she she was a sexy nineties uh, uh, comic book woman, but she was also smart. She was capable. She was shrewd, mm. um, and she was ex uh, extremely good at everything that she did in this issue. She, I mean, there were a couple of times when it looked like she was in trouble, but. I never once thought that she was going to have uh, a failure. Mm -mm. And again, they didn't even go like the classic tropes. It's like, oh, will she find love or anything like this? You know, she, basically, most of the time, it was just, we need the money. Give me that's that. right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's what the series was about. Exactly. So, all right. So, yes, kids. Uh, there's your uh, week of Silver Sable because yes, we're still doing two two uh, episodes a week here in September. Next, that's right. Next week will be our uh, final two weeker because the final the last week uh, Ray and Dave will be back to do Scarlet Spider, so we'll just have one Marvel tale at the end of that. But here, let me. I don't know why I'm opening the schedule. I know September. Yes, because uh, next week we're going to be doing all West Coast Avengers, kids. Uh, we're going to start with uh, the four issue original four issue West Coast Avengers miniseries mm. that started the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, the second episode that week, we'll do uh, West Coast Avengers one and two from the ongoing series and Vision and the Scarlet Witch number two because it crosses over. Yeah. One of my personal favorites. Yeah. And then we'll uh, end September with uh, the Mighty Thor 433 through 436. Yes, kids. Yeah. Masterson. Yes. That was Phil's pick. I love it. Mm -hmm. All right. And I don't know if we've uh, announced this officially yet. In uh, October, we got some spooky tales for you. Yeah. Kids. We got uh, the, fir the first week. We'll do the first four issues of the original Ghost R uh, Well, the uh, 90s Ghost Rider series mm -hmm. with Danny mm -hmm. Cat. So we'll do the first issue, four issues there. The second week, we'll do the first five issues of Hellstorm Prince of Lies from the 90s. Yeah. It's been a long time since I've read that one, Phil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And again, the last two weeks of the month, you know, I wonder whose picks these were. Uh, <laughs> because uh, the first the week three, we'll do Marvel Comics Presents one through six, specifically a man thing story. So, mm -hmm. uh huh. I wonder who requested man thing. Uh huh. Uh huh. It's a giant size man thing. <laughs> and then the last episode of the month, yes, we'll do uh we'll finish it up with uh Marvel Comics Presents seven through twelve. Uh so concluding the story. Yes. Yeah. So and yeah. you you haven't read that one yet, right? That's a it's gonna be a I've I mean, one read for you? some of it. It's been a while, so it's it, it'll be it's kind a long of one. Me, but yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, kids. <laughs> Things are going to get weird with the man thing. 
Don't you hate when that happens? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Stay tuned for that giant sized man thing, kids. Giant sized man thing. <laughs> All right, so send us your thoughts. Email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail, 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember, you can find all things Capes and Lunatics, episodes, social media, merchandise, the uh, the uh, Patreon. Uh, once again, you can catch all Little Hellfire's uh, Heroes Reborn thoughts on there, speaking of 90s Marvel. So. Yes, uncensored. And drunken. Uh <laughs> So yeah, join the Patreon Elite like Justin, Ray, Russell, yes. and Moz. Join us in the Patreon Elite to get all the perks and all the good stuff every month. Yes. So uh, yes, so find uh, all of it at uh, tubespace.io slash Capes and Lunatic Podcast Network. That's tubespace.io slash Capes and Lunatics Podcast Network. All right. Now up to this superstar. Uh, <laughs> yes, he's here every week on Marvel Tales. He's usually on We Are The Night, the Batman podcast. The- once a month, uh, but now in September, he's there, he's been there every episode. Uh, now does electric mullet with me and Tyler, and we think we're picking up Mr. James Cole, so nice. uh, yeah, yeah. So join us on the electric mullet, the Superman sausage fest, uh, twice a month. <laughs> uh, but that is not all this man does. He, well, you don't want to know the things he's done, no, but it's not <laughs> podcast. Tell the people what your other podcast, Justin. Uh, besides my OnlyFans page, you can also Whoa! find me. <laughs> yeah, you can get you can... Little, little start a podcast only for fans. So, yeah. <laughs> you can also find me uh, twice a month on Gamma Charge, the strongest podcast there is, with my pal Russell, where we talk about everything to do with the Incredible Hulk and She-Hulk. And we are reviewing the brand new series from Philip Kennedy Johnson and Nick Klein, which is excellent. We also have a Patreon, so check that out if you're so inclined. And Russell and I are both joined by our pals Ray and Sparky on Predator and Prey, a Yocha podcast, or I should say the Yocha podcast is the only one as far as we know, where uh, twice a month we also talk about uh, Fox's Predator in comic books, action figures, movies, and more. And last but not least, The Lost Library of Legends will be coming out soon. Scream at! <laughs> I thought you were. I thought you were just gonna promote Gamma Charge and uh, uh, Predator and Prey. I was about to say, don't ask about the damn life. <laughs> don't jinx it. <laughs> no, that's what. That's what I was saying. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. Tap 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 in my way downtown. Uh. I'm gonna, say, I'm gonna surprise everybody once it's actually out. I think everybody will be surprised at the end of this. I'll be like, and the Lost Library of Legends is out. <laughs> One day, kids will wake up and we'll be like, "Wait a minute! So what is this podcast? And why did it drop 15 episodes at once? What's going on?" <laughs> it's been my diabolical master plan all along. <laughs> Record a whole year's worth of stuff and then put it out all at once. Because <laughs> you know it'll be something like you know it'll be like his favorite biscuits and literature. Yes. <laughs> <Cock a doodle-doo. laughs> My ten favorite blondes in Hollywood. Anything <laughs> Marsh? Oh boy. Uh All right, kids. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Yes, join us next week for two West Coast Avengers episodes. I swear, when we record, I don't know if we mentioned Tiger enough. I just like just imagine Ray uh, spontaneously appearing in the chat room. (laughs) His ears start burning. He's like talking about Tiger somewhere. All right, kids, come back next time. And remember, watch those damn house parties. <laughs>